Well, Chapter 2 has me a little bit bored with another autopilot FNCS competitive mode, and while that could be its totally own video, weekly cash cups are back, not to mention zero communication from Epic, and I've just decided I want to get a little bit instructional. I want to go on ahead and give some top five tips. So that's what we're going to do today. So hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crashy. And today I want to give you my top five tips that will guarantee you improvement as a player. So while some of these tips you may have probably heard before, others are coming from a little bit of a different perspective that might open your mind and help you unlock new and improved versions of yourself as a player. So definitely stick around for that. So I think this will be pretty short and sweet. Sweet, honestly I think um, you know we'll just go ahead and jump in I'm gonna elaborate on these five points like I said some of them you'll have heard before and some of them are, are pretty closely related and they kind of go in tandem together so let's go ahead and jump into it number one we are in the box meta boys so uh, it, it's simple you have to be practice box fighting gone are the days of old where we would build battle to height with a new trend of creative box fighting thanks to liquid fiber and his box fighting map but how does this guarantee improvement well overexposure to points of weakness in your game play especially in box fighting will help you build better habits and better prepare you for the decisions of your opponents more specifically practicing box fighting inside of a box practice out box fighting outside of a box you know practice uh, baiting shots baiting pickaxe swings all of these types of things like I said the overexposure will help you become less predictable and will help you become more able to predict what your enemy's enemy is going to do you know while you're pressuring them and different things of this sort and you know while this video is not specifically an advanced box fighting tutorial you you have to be able to perform in box fighting and so that's the the ultimate tip you have to be able to go into box fights very comfortably and right now in the current state of the game if you're not practicing box fighting if you're not at least you know, looking at yourself as a box fighter and trying to find ways to improve, then you're definitely gonna be falling behind. So, like I said, to guarantee improvement, if you want to, you know, be a better player, then you'll, you're you're gonna be able to see some tangible results if you work on your box fighting. So, tip number two, learn how to be self-critical. Be your own best critic. Now, this is a simple concept, yet very difficult to prefer, perform for some reason. And I feel like only once you can assume the responsibility for your failures, your mistakes, can you open your mind enough to accept them and truly learn from them? And, you know, like I say all the time for VOD reviewing, for yourself, because it is a chore, nine times out of 10, if you watch back your own deaths, you will spot the mistake. And, and when you can accept that the mistake was your fault, you'll truly learn from it. So, you know, if you're prepared to accept that mistake, you'll learn from it over time. That's the thing. And this is really important. You have to find the balance between being a good self-critic and not being too hard on yourself. It's not good to put yourself down and, you know, to really kind of like hate on yourself for making the mistakes, but it is good to accept the mistakes and take the responsibility that you're the reason why you didn't do so well and not the game. So that way you can accept them, learn from them, and then improve over time. And I mean, ultimately, you know, <laughs> you chose to do what you did, and so you have to be able to be in control in those situations. Number three, learn how to min-max early game in Fortnite. This tip may have been brought up somewhere. Um, I feel like it could also be a new concept for some of you. Min-maxing basically means to operate with strong efficiency. Now in this context, I'm talking about early to mid game, and it basically means when I say to min-max an early game in Fortnite, I mean that you need to loot and farm materials efficiently and not waste time. A very large hidden skill in Fortnite is time management. So how do we min-max early game? This comes from perfecting your drop and pre-planning multiple loot paths that will correlate with various zones. As I write my script for this, and I'm reading off my script right now, but as I write my script, I find it very hard to explain this point, so I'm going to try to keep it simple. Farm your drop in a path of floor loot and chest spawns. Farm your materials while you're looting your guns. Plan the mats that you need as you drop. Know the mats that you can get ahead of your rotation based on where the zone is shifting. Be quick. Rotate as soon as possible without harming your loot or material gain. So ultimately, you need to be efficient. That's what min-maxing is. It means getting the materials, getting the loot, and get yourself moving quickly. Number four, learn how to be a valuable communicator. Now this tip, this really comes out whenever I'm coaching people. 
you know, as an analytical thinker who has coached players in the past, the one thing I always try to work on is communication. And, you know, poor or inexperienced communicators struggle to convey meaningful information in an efficient way. So the end all be all goal is be accurate, be concise and speak with purpose. Don't flood your comms. Don't, you know, just be joking around the whole time. If you're really trying to improve, and this is more specifically on squads, not just solo play. But if you're really trying to improve, you need to improve your comms. And as an IGL, mining communication always has purpose. I'm managing my squad's stackable items like grenades and bandages. I'm you know, pressuring action by calling rotations and over farming materials or checking in on materials to speed up our timetable. As a player on a team, I personally find that I actually speak very little. I do my best to keep the comms to a minimum unless I have vital information to share, but being a strong communicator goes beyond just what's in the game. It's important to communicate with your teammates respectfully and efficiently. We're all human beings with our own lives, and it is imperative that you respect your teammates by keeping them in the loop on your schedule and more importantly on how you're feeling as a person. Interpersonal communication can help solve issues within a team that would otherwise grow into much bigger problems. But side note, there's always an appropriate place and time to have a certain discussion. Arguing over a decision that the IGL made in the middle of a game is not how you do it. So ultimately, this, this goes way past just playing games. Communication in relationships, whether you're friends, teammates, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever the case may be, it's really, really important in life to be a good communicator. So that doesn't change just because you're playing a competitive game. Communicate with your teammates, communicate efficiently. Last but not least, tip number five, and this is kind of like a dual parter and it goes along with communication and you'll see why. You need to learn how to be a strong in-game leader or you need to learn how to properly trust and follow an in-game leader as a squad mate. Now, this is hands down the most important tip next to communication. Like I said, they kind of go hand in hand. If you're an in-game leader, you have to find the best way to communicate with your teammates. This means understanding your players, understanding your team, knowing how to speak to them in a way that they will respond, in a way that will give them respect and allow them to trust you. Be assertive, but don't be overly aggressive or demanding. You have to be efficient. Now, when I talk about being an IGL a lot, from my perspective, I don't ever want to be the dictator of the team, but at the end of the day, I kind of am anyways, because I have the final say on what we do. I'm the person that leads the, the, you know, leads the charge. I'm the person that's making the decisions, but your teammates have to respect you because you need them to trust you and your teammates need to know that you're on an even playing field with them as a person. I don't go into my team, even if the players are younger than me and try to berate them or, you know, hold them under my foot. That's not what I'm there to do. You want to be efficient. You want to be respectful and you want to be assertive without being aggressive. Now, adversely, as a squad member, you need to learn how to pull your guard down and trust your in-game leader. You have to find the perfect balance as a teammate to convey your plan and your vision without overstepping your role. Because it is important that you communicate and it is important that you share your ideas in game without stepping into that realm of trying to control the game. So communicate with your squad and IGL effectively and efficiently, but more than anything, give your trust to the in-game leader. And this is a big one because that's really what the in-game leader is there to do. They're there to make the decision, but to make the decision for the decision to actually stick and work, you have to have the trust of your teammates. So even a bad decision should be followed if called by the in-game leader. And then if it, if it was really a bad decision or if you feel like it was a bad decision, it can be discussed later at an appropriate time. Like I said up in tip number four, there's a time and a place when you should be discussing what did and didn't work and it's definitely not in the middle of a game. And the end of the game of communicating and knowing how to be a good leader and knowing how to be a good teammate is that if you don't have trust in your squad, in your teammate, in your leader, there will be hesitation. And those moments of hesitation, those moments of, of indecision and uncertainty, those are the difference between being an okay team or maybe even a bad team and being a good team or a great team. So some of these tips really are a little bit introspective. They're about more than just the game outside of like box fighting. It's about learning how to be an efficient player. It's about learning how to do things that aren't just related to mechanics in the game. It's about learning how to be critical without being 
too hard on yourself. It's about learning how to be efficient, how to communicate, how to lead, how to follow. So hopefully this is a little bit helpful. I definitely, like I said, as like an analytical thinker, someone that has been doing esports for a really long time, these are tips that I'm, I'm telling you will guarantee that you improve as a person and as a player, because these are things that you can use in life. These are things that you need to understand how to be able to do, and it doesn't go outside of esports only, you know what I mean? It doesn't only stick inside the realm of esports either. So thanks for checking out this video. I definitely appreciate it. Please not leave without leaving a like and comment on the video. What do you think about these tips and how do you think you can apply? So again, thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate it again, and I'll see you on the next video. Does the beat take you over? You just